Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you about one of Nancy's daughter's books, Rachel Jankovic's Loving the Little Years. Rachel, mother of seven, offers practical advice on how to persevere in the high but demanding call of motherhood. This is not a tender reminiscence from someone who had children so long ago that she only remembers the sweet parts. If you know someone in the trenches of motherhood, we can't recommend Rachel Jankovic's Loving the Little Years more. Get it at canonpress.com. Welcome to the Feminine Podcast. This is Nancy Wilson. Thank you for joining me today. I thought today I would talk to you about worship because yesterday was the election. Today's Wednesday. And as far as I know, we still don't know who has won. And whatever the eventual outcome, it seems like it'd be good to talk about permanent things, you know, the things that are clear for us. And worship is one of those things. So this seemed appropriate to talk about worship, because whatever the outcome, we serve the Lord and we know we have our marching orders and we know what to do. And this should give us just a lot of stability and just be very reassuring to us that we can have in Christ peace and joy regardless of the outcome. And this is just such a gift in these crazy times. It's a gift that we don't take lightly. And that is, we know who we are, and we know God, and He has redeemed us, and He's promised so many things to us, and He's given us life, and He's promised to be with us, uh, and He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, so we have nothing to fear. So I thought, in these funny times, that it'd be good to talk about worship, because worship is the most important thing we do. So. Steady as she goes. I mean, that's what we do. We still have many duties. If you're like me, I mean, you have groceries to unload too. I have meals to prepare, laundry to wash and put away. I've got plenty of household duties, my Bible reading, and keeping an eye on my father-in-law as one of his caregivers. And none of those things have changed. And this is what it's like to live on the rock and not on the sinking sand. But as things continue to grow, unsteady around us, we should thank God all the more that we can gather to worship Him each week. Worship is our most important earthly duty, so that's why I thought it'd be good to talk about how we can arrive each week more prepared, more grateful, more anxious to come before Him and worship Him. And that's what we are created to do. We are most fulfilling our humanly purpose and calling when we're worshiping God. And obviously, you know, our lives are on the altar, but the worship service, the formal gathering of his people to worship him, that's our most important duty every week. So we shouldn't approach it haphazardly or half-heartedly, but really prepare about for it and think about it. And I don't mean that it should take us away from all the other things we do because we're concentrating on Sunday so much. No, it's part of the rhythm of our lives. But worship is strenuous, and it's supposed to be strenuous. It takes a lot out of us, and it fills us up. But the end result is that we walk away equipped for the work of a new week. So we worship, and we rest on the Lord's Day, and then we work. And this is the weekly cycle God has designed for us, and it's good. Have you ever thought about how you can prepare during the week for worship? We don't want to just drift into worship casually because then we're just not going to participate fully. And so I just thought I would give you a few things I've learned over the years and how to be ready for worship. Now, I may have told you this before. It's along the lines of true confessions. But I didn't always love Sundays because Sunday was a lot of work for me. And Our kids were little, 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 and Doug was preaching at a service first in another town, and so he would leave really early, and then I would meet him at our worship service. And, you know, there were just, I was just 
full of self-pity about it and not enjoying it as I should be and not prepared for it, having a grumbling attitude. And it wasn't until a friend of mine, just by the way, mentioned how she looked so forward to Sunday every week. And it was very convicting to me. And I realized, well, my goodness, my husband's a pastor. Surely I should be looking forward to this every week. And he has described this as, uh, in football terms, that all week long, as we are walking with the Lord, it's like practice for game day, and that Sunday is game day. And so it would be as though I, you know, I was just missing out on being excited about the most important thing that we were preparing for all week long. But I began to pray that God would change my attitude, and He truly did. And I, but I just had let this thing go for a long time and just hadn't realized how I drifted into such a, just not a rejoicing attitude about Sunday. So obviously it was, God began to change my heart and mind and it became sweeter and sweeter. Also, my children grew up, they were able to sit, you know, with me and they were able to get themselves dressed. I mean, you know, we moved on. Dad quit preaching in this other town and we moved into a better a better building for our church you know many things changed and my life is a lot simpler now i mean i'm not now i mean my children all have children of their own and but wherever you are and whatever phase you are whether you are living by yourself or you're living with a bunch of little people you want to be thinking about how to prepare for the Lord's Day. And so I'm hoping I can share some tips, if you want to call them tips, suggestions for you. The best preparation, of course, is just walking faithfully all week long. You know, practice, practice, practice. We're staying in fellowship. We are not carrying a bunch of grievances and unconfessed sin with us into the sanctuary that we're walking with God all week. That is the best preparation. And remember, we have an enemy, and he is going to try to sow discord Obviously, the most strategic time would be on the Lord's Day. And so make a point of having your guard up, of staying in fellowship, of not stumbling others. And so you can all arrive in good fellowship when you get to church. And if you don't, then I suggest you stay in the car until you're right. And then you go in (laughs) because it's much better to arrive in good shape than spiritually disheveled and distracted and trying to sort it out there in the sanctuary. The other thing is, for preparation, just be reading the Word all week long. This is another thing that keeps us in shape for Sunday. We know our way around the Bible. We're paying attention. We, we've read it, read that passage. If we know what the pastor's preaching on, you know, we can read it ahead. And sometimes, like my husband, he publishes the outline of his sermon. Some people go ahead and read that and prepare. You know, there's there's no rules here. You do what you're inclined to do. I just want to encourage you to be thoughtful about it. If you're in the Word all week and nourished by it, then you're going to be hungry for more. So just stick with it. On the practical side, and here's where you might say I have some little tips for little kids. If Sunday morning is a hectic, crazy time for you, then just back up for a minute. And think about ways you can prepare to make it smoother sailing Sunday morning. It just depends on where do you need help. Do you need to figure out what everybody's wearing for Sunday and have that ready? That might be a big help for you. Otherwise, you can waste a lot of time Sunday morning running around trying to find the missing shoe, etc. And, you know, the old term Sunday best, that really means something. You know, there was a time when people wore their best clothes to church on Sunday. And so I I still believe because we take the Lord's worship very seriously that our clothes ought to reflect that this is a special occasion. It's just not a regular weekday event. And I'm not believe me, I'm not suggesting a hat and gloves or a prom dress, please. No. I'm just saying that even if it is jeans, it's your good jeans. Um, it's not the ones you painted the garage in the other day. You know, we're presenting ourselves to God. So we ought to take pains 
to present ourselves and our children looking well, looking sharp in our Sunday best. And if it helps you also, you know, to have breakfast figured out, you know, Saturday night, you can throw some things together or do an inventory and just have a plan. Um, Maybe it's a box of Cheerios and some sliced bananas. It doesn't matter. Or maybe you have a husband or maybe you do this where you cook a big Sunday breakfast. I mean, three cheers for you. I love it. But maybe it's simpler than that. I'm just saying, give it some thought because this is an important occasion. And you may be taken up with thinking about Sunday dinner and as well you should. But if there are other things that seem to be troubles every week, we'll just pause and think about it and say, I need a strategy so these aren't stumbling us every week so we can all get in the car and get to church in the joy of the Lord with no distractions, keeping it simple. Then if you take your Bibles and your hymn books to church, same thing, have the kids set them out so they're ready in the morning. You know, just coach them. Don't scold them. You know, just help them to be ready. Help them to take responsibility for it themselves. And don't be that person who is um, just scolding them and and uh, berating them. And I told you sewing them, etc. Uh, you just want to teach them and train them and help them. So it's smooth. It's a smooth path. If it helps to figure out showers, I mean, for years, we just had one bathroom. So there are five of us. So, you know, we just had to have a plan of how we were going to get all those done. <laughs> and when the kids were itty bitty, I just took care of that, gave them all their baths Saturday night. So they were ready to go. Seasons change. Maybe you have lots of bathrooms and you don't have to worry about that. Well, wonderful. But these are just suggestions that you think about Sunday morning, where the hiccups are, and how you can make it just a happier time for all your family. And you can appear before him with a calm heart, not a flustered spirit at all. And like I said, don't be that dictatorial mother. It'd be better to show up with the unmatching shoes than with a raggedy heart. So God is much more impressed with a clean heart than a clean shirt. And it's nice when we have both. (laughs) Yes. But don't get your priorities lopsided, of course. The other thing that I think is a wonderful preparation for the Lord's Day is prayer. So we all pray all week long, right? We're praying for many things. So don't forget to pray for church. And many people over the years have told me how they're praying for my husband. And I just appreciate it so much. And certainly I should be praying for him more than anybody else. And so pray for your own people that they will all be prepared for worship. But also pray for the church service itself. And it, you know, this is another thing you can just work into the rhythm of your week. You know, maybe you pray different things each day and you can just put the worship service on one of those days one of those index cards. If Once you get started, I mean, it's easy to think, well, I should pray for the pastor, pray for the sermon. But yes, please do. And that's very important. And pray for his preparation. And pray for all your pastors, your elders, your deacons. And you don't have to remember all their names. (laughs) But it's good to remind the Lord of them and pray for their families. But once you get started, then you think, well, I should pray for the choir and the choir director and all those people who set up the folding chairs and who take them down, and all those folks who either videotape or do the sound recordings or prepare the Lord's Supper. I mean, in our church right now, there are women who are baking the bread every week. It's so sweet. I don't know who's doing it, but Lord, please bless them. You know, and who's lead? someone's going to be leading in prayer, and someone's going to be reading the Word, and someone behind the scenes has been printing up the bulletins. And making the coffee for afterwards. Oh, and then there's the security team. I shouldn't forget them, right? Um, (laughs) All these people are using their gifts to bless us every week. And so we just want to pray for them. And as you're praying for them, then you're, I think you're more invested. You go and you think, there's that choir director who I prayed for this week. And then you might think of, thanking him afterwards or thanking her afterwards for her good job or for the choir, etc. When we invest in praying for the service, we are just going to feel 
more a part of it as well. Some of you might feel like you don't have any time right now to to help with the setup or with making the coffee or any of those kinds of jobs, but you can pray. We can all pray. And don't forget to pray for your own heart to be ready to receive what God has for you and pray for your kids that each week they will grow in appreciation of the Lord's Day service and they will come out stronger for it. So that is my little exhortation to you today, that in the midst of all these funny times, unpredictable times, that we have an anchor and we know who we are and we know what we're for. And so focus on worship, pray for worship, and attend worship, and love meeting with God there and with His people. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great week.